What's going on everybody? This is Jordan with Gym9TCG and today I am not feeling 100% but we are still out here bringing you the most satisfying one hit KOs uh, in all of standard right now. Uh, I spent a lot of time on my last stream learning the Hisui and Zoroark V-Star deck uh, and what I thought was a really simple straightforward deck ended up being a bit more challenging from a sequencing and just game plan perspective than I had given it credit for and it has very quickly become one of my favorite decks I've ever played, uh, let alone uh, in this current meta. It's definitely got some challenges, specifically against uh, Kyrim VMAX and some Palkia lists, but I am confident it can take down pretty much everything in this format. Uh, and I am gonna show off some games against Arceus Giratina. Uh, I'm gonna show off a game against Hisui and Gudra V and just against Lawson and Single Prizers. So hope you guys enjoy. Uh, and this is the card that is the centerpiece of the deck. Suyin Zoroark V stars Ticking Curse Attack. Does 50 damage for every Pokemon in the game on your side of the field that has damage counters on it. Uh, it's paired up with the Gengar with its Netherworld Gate ability that can allow it to come back from the discard pile onto the bench with damage counters on it. And then we can use Damage Pump to move those damage counters onto other Pokemon on our bench or even in the active slot. We only play four double turbo energy, that's our entire energy base, so we can take really aggressive lines of uh, trainer cards throughout the deck and it turns into some really fun games. So hope you guys enjoy it and we'll see you towards the end of the video. All right, so this deck is relatively straightforward. Um, it's one of the less complicated decks from a theory standpoint, but plenty complicated from an execution standpoint. Um, we're running a 4-4 Zoroark V-Star line. Ticking Curse is going to be doing lots of damage for us as the game goes on, since we can really easily spread damage around our team uh, using Gengar's Underworld Door ability, or Underworld Gate, Netherworld Gate, got both words wrong. Netherworld Gate ability, which is gonna put three damage counters on it as it leaves the discard pile and rejoins our team on the bench. Uh, and then we can use damage pump to spread that around, which is very, very uh, exciting. Should be getting into this pretty well. Okay, let's go ahead and just hop into some games, learn this deck. Not a bad start at all. Love to use Ultra Ball to ditch some cards. We'll see if we need the Radiant Halucha. Probably not. So we can use Ultra Ball to ditch Lucha Zoroark and grab, grab a Gengar. Quick Ball away the Gengar to get Zoroark, bench Zoroark, bench Crobat V, draw some cards. Bench the Mew, Air Balloon, Zoroark, Retreat, Mew, Mysterious Tail, Grab. Probably Belt here seems good. Damage Pump is a little bit bigger, probably. Damage Pump a little bit bigger. Well, Trekking Shoes. Uh, Let's not draw it. We don't need another one, I don't think. Uh, DTE is big. Let's go ahead and throw this back on our bench. Uh, let's damage pump, move this stuff around. We're going to move it to our Zoroark and our Crobats. I think we'll pass. We don't have any reason to rush attach the DTE. Like, they could Marty us and we could lose the DTE, but that seems okay. Rather than having giving them an opportunity to focus it down. Alright, we're playing against an Arctina deck, which I have been playing around with. I actually really like that archetype. Like, Arctina is a little bit more consistent than Lost Zone Tina and gives you, like, hitting for 280 is usually enough. You don't typically need the auto knockout. It struggles against Gudra, in my experience, more so than Lost Zone Tina does, but still very solid. That's exactly how this all shakes out. We do have access to our V-Star ability. They are just going to Trinity Charge. So they do get turn one Trinity Charge off, which is pretty big for them. I would love to be able to boss in that Tina and knock it out. 
And we are one card really away from that happening. All right, so let's evolve our Hisuian Zoroark. Let's attach a choice belt. Uh, we cannot attach a choice belt to it. Uh, so let's go ahead and attach the DTE instead. We will Mysterious Tail. We will grab a net. That's huge. We will use net on the Mew. Punch up our own Hisuian Zoroark V-Star. We will bench the Mew, and we will Phantom Star. Yeah, it's a little tough to lose the Marnies, but like I think trying to find play a little playing a little bit greedier is not bad at all. Let's go and use Trekking Shoes. Uh, yeah, let's put this card into our hand. Yeah, that's fine. Let's play Gape Jaw Bog. Gape Jaw Bog is twenty, correct? Let's play the other Trekking Shoes real quick. Just draw that. How much health do you have? 220. So we need some way to... Gape Jaw Bog will get us to 4, which is 200, which is 180. Dang, we are close, but not quite there, unfortunately. We can boss in the bat, though. That seems pretty good just to take two prizes, and then we'll have to swing for everything with the to knock out the Giratina V-Star. That seems okay. We're not knocking out anything else, but taking these two prizes early is pretty big. I think we bench the Mew here. Boss up the bat. And we will take the two prizes that they give us. That seems good to me. Let's go and do that. Swing for knockout with 180. Our path forward is still very clear. I think we just need f a full board of damaged Pokemon, and then we should be in good shape. Huge draw to get the other Suin Zoroark V-Star. I should have attached the Choice Belt to my other Pokemon. Don't really no... Oh, it put another Giratina down. I don't think that'll be relevant, but it could be. Not entirely sure. Yeah, so they'll be able to swing for 280, for sure. Not a problem. But if we can swing for 280 back, I think that'll put us in very solid shape. Okay, Marnie hurts a little bit. Definitely would have preferred to hold on to that hand. Especially with the two DTE now being trapped at the bottom, that's really tough. We're gonna need to find some search. That's pretty big. We've already used V-Star. So I think we'll throw our Zoroark V up into the active. Let's see what we draw here. We can definitely get rid of Canceling Cologne. We don't need that. So hopefully we can get rid of whatever the next card we draw is. Another Marnie. Let's go to an Ultra Ball. We do absolutely need V-Star. So there's not really an option there otherwise. Let's go ahead and grab the V-Star. Man, to lose another damage pump is just really tough, though. Damage pump, move up to two damage counters from one of your Pokemon. So let's damage pump. Move one there, done. Cool. So now we literally have to draw any Pokemon and a DTE, and then we're good. Perfect. Literally ideal. So we attach DTE. Ultra Ball away, Gengar. Gengar boss? I th oh, this is tough. Tougher than I thought it was going to be. Because um, we need to get another Zora workout. I think we get rid of Gengar damage pump. Because we can try to strike anything weak. Well, we could get... Nah, we need the Zoroark, because we need to be able to continue to swing every turn. And that enables us to swing for knockout on the Tina. So we are now two prizes away, which is great. Ultra Ball is not bad. Mew, not bad. So we will be able to find the other Hisuian Zoroark V. Or V-Star, rather. And we win. 
I think that's tough. I I, I don't know that we a hundred percent had it the following turn, but they definitely didn't seem like they could knock us out. Electing to let us go first, probably playing against some kind of lost zone deck. Then would be my guess. Not a bad opening hand at all. Let's see if we can draw Gape Draw Bog. We are playing against Lost Zone. That is good to know. Let's go ahead and bench the Zoroark V's. We will Mysterious Tail to grab a. Go ahead and grab a Damage Pump. See if we can't get hyper lucky off of the shoes. Uh, we will draw this. Yes, let's put that card into our hand. We can air balloon here, retreat into Mew and Mysterious Tail again. This time we will grab the Ultra Ball. I think at this point we probably just wait. We don't want to give them any reason to be able to differentiate between the two Zoroark on the bench. So we just kind of pause here. If this is single prize lost zone, it is single prize lost zone. We know that the fire energy, they're definitely playing Radiant Charizard, which is always just really strong. I feel like we probably struggle against this deck quite a bit, um, but it does lower our damage ceiling that we need to hit by a significant margin. So we should be able to swing for damage a little bit more reliably uh, than we might otherwise be able to. Love the pre-release promo comfy. Did sign up today for both the uh, Silver Tempest pre-release nearby and the uh, Toronto Regionals. So super stoked about that. Like I said on the Twitter, we're going to take a look at all of the Paradigm Trigger, the cards that'll make up our Silver Tempest set and kind of give our our opinion on them as we go through. Ooh, Escape Rope. Interesting. I think they're probably doing that more for themselves than they are for me. They likely have another one. I do think they need to add some kind of indicator that an ability has been used. I know they have that in PTCGL, but not PTCGO, which is a little tough. Another rope. What do you know? Go ahead and throw the Mew up there. Just all of the flower selecting. So they've already got four or five cards now in the Lost Zone. That's pretty tough. Seven cards now. So they will have unlocked Mirage Gate on their first turn going second. That's freaking insane. That is just such a powerful deck to try to compete with. No, I'm, uh, I have seen Marvel Snap as a game. It's Marvel Snap. Can you get that on Steam or is it just mobile? Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap, it's a Windows app. Interesting. Any of you guys played Marvel Snap yet? Maybe we fire that up later on. See what we can do there. Double cross which are going away is a little bit crazy for them, for the Lost Zone. That's like a really valuable asset that they'd want to have later, I would think, but... Path not bad. That will definitely restrict my outs here. I need to hit a supporter of some kind, I think, this turn. Let's go ahead and put the Mew up there. Gape Draw Bog. Immediately hit. That's pretty big. But attach that. Uh, we don't need Choice Belt, actually. So we will go ahead and Ultra Ball away. Belt DTE. And we will go grab V-Star right here. We'll evolve our Pokemon on the bench. We'll Mysterious Tail for another Air Balloon. We can attach that to our uh, soon-to-be active Pokemon. Retreat the Mew and Phantom Star for seven cards. Let's see what we get. All right, not a lot in terms of cards that can actually help us here. We do get the evolution set up for the next turn, which is big. Um, I think we can discard Radiant Halucha here and get another Mew out of the deck. That seems pretty solid. Probably could have gone for Crobat there. That seems all right. 
see a few more cards. All right, Crobat answers anyway. Very sweet. Trekking shoes. See if we can find the Gengar. We do not. Uh, no, we will draw a different card. Dang it, we would have loved to find that Gengar. But I think we just hit 100, so we're down to 80. But Lumineon V or that can get us to. This can push us over the edge here to 150, I think, or 130, I guess. Yeah, 130 should do it. Yeah, that'll do it. So we will go ahead and we will swing with Ticking Curse for 130, which is the entire ceiling we need to hit. Actually, Charizard, I guess, is 160. So we need one more Pokemon with damage counters on it in order to hit for the numbers we need. We should be in phenomenal shape. They're definitely going to be getting that Sableye rolling, though, and the 60 HP Muse are not great for that. So I'll probably end up scooping up a Mew just to make sure I can deny them the two prize situation. And just keep hefty uh, Pokemon V on the bench. Force them to have some other outs to taking us down. Should be pretty solid here, though. No tournaments on Friday night either, which is a little tough. Sorry, this is better for just learning what the kind of outer limits for this deck are. I honestly think we might boss up Cramorant next turn if they go for us. If they don't attack with Cramorant, we're probably going to boss it in. I wonder if a lost, uh, lost City is a card worth playing to counter Lost Zone single prizers with this deck. Because we obviously like we recur with the Gengar, but just shoving some cards in the lost zone for our opponent, like it's not like they're not going to get there themselves. And uh, it could prevent them from recurring some powerful cards. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be able to take two prizes here with their Sableye, which is unfortunate. But that's okay. We can go ahead and knock that out and just bench our Luminion. That's plenty far out. Well, they might just have... I guess I have to make sure they keep having outs to Sableye. That's probably the biggest thing. Luckily, I don't even have to bench anything else this turn to deal with it. Uh, I just hit 480 off the bat. And I can make my Zoroark V-Star a little heftier as well. I don't really need to draw anything, so I just get to swing at you. Which seems pretty good. I'm curious if I should try here. This is something I've debated a lot with, like, Lost I think I have to take out the Sableye or else he's going to keep hitting me. But I would love to know when the turn is that you should start targeting their draw engines. Rather than just knocking out the Pokemon they throw in the active. It's a tough uh, delineation, to say the least. Obviously, they're going to play some Claras. Chloris's experiment, so they won't be recurring that Sableye, I don't think. Although they could find, like, Ordinary Rod plus Quick Ball would bring it back. Um, they're going to get lower on cards quickly here. That's a lot of cards in the Lost Zone already. We'll see exactly what happens here if they're able to get it fully set up. They wouldn't bench it if they didn't have it, would be my guess. But maybe they don't have the Psychic Energy would be the only thing that could stop them in this case. Because they have the Retreat going. I think their plan is going to be to take a, a significantly high-priced turn, or maybe get themselves down to just needing two prizes left and then swing with Radiant Charizard on my Zoroark V-Star once I take enough. All right, we're going into the Comfy. Maybe they have Scoop Up Net, though. Ditch the other Battle Pass. That should be all four of them used. They shouldn't have a ton more free cards left. Yeah, that's all four Battle VIP Pass. They do have the Switch, which means they've got the Psychic Energy. Where are they going to spread this damage to? They're definitely going to spread it onto the Crobat V. But they should know that like spreading damage a little bit more definitely... Uh, helps me out at least a little bit. They've only got nine cards left. I wonder if I play a Volo in this deck. 
just like to help deal with this problem. Cause like voloing the crowbat here would be enormous. I don't know, I might have to play around with that a little bit cause we could like Luminion for Volo here and then just get rid of the Crobat and set them back another turn. We only got nine cards left in their whole deck. So that helps us out quite a bit. Yeah, so they're trying to set up for a larger multi-prize turn here. I don't think I'm going to try and help them get out of the situation that they're in. I can play that there's no reason to bench a card early here. So I can just play Ticking, or I just hit with Ticking Curse. I have to get three more attacks off. That's going to be quite a bit to ask for from this deck. I've also gotten rid of all of the, like... I think they threw a fire energy in here at the beginning of the game though they did i don't see any in the discard pile yet so there's probably still one or two more in the deck they've got to have access to a clara somewhere as long as they do they'll be in great shape course experiment again interesting i haven't seen any lost zone decks that play more than two Okay, they're putting down Path, which means that they're... I don't know why they keep putting this down. Because they're shutting off... This shuts off their own Charizard, or their own Radiant Charizard. And they already threw the Lost Vacuum in the Lost Zone, so it's not like they have access to Lost Vacuum to get it, and they are down to one card in deck. If they're not careful, they will just lose in the next turn or two. Yeah, so they can't attack with this, this turn, and I'm just going to boss it up and knock it out. I don't know if they know that, right? Because the ability, they might not be looking at it as much. It's definitely possible that they just are clicking glowing carts and didn't totally realize that that's how the card worked. Attack with Cramorant. I'm going to boss in the Charizard. They're going to attack with Cramorant again. I'll attack the Cramorant and then I'll just attack again. Boss in the Charizard. I think that's fine. They can curse. They can't swing over the top. Oh. Oh, I had the knockout in hand. What am I doing? All I had to do is put Luminion on the bench. Ugh. It doesn't matter though, because they can't attack with it. And now they're stuck. They've got to have an ordinary rod in hand. Otherwise, this is GG's for them. Is this is 16 counters. Oh, they do have Lost Vacuum. But it doesn't matter. Even if they knock this out, all I have to do is pass, right? They already used Colrus. Yeah, we win. Well played. All we have to do is pass now. Uh, we definitely screwed that up, though. If we attack there, we win automatically. Uh, they don't get that attack off, and we, they have no way to stop us. Uh, definitely forgot the amount of damage we were doing. Radiant Charizard getting 160 health is definitely like something that I think I overlook. Let's go ahead and go heads, see where we're at. Again, welcome in, everybody. If you guys aren't following already, go ahead and hit that follow button. Check out YouTube. Oh, what a hand. What a starting hand. Uh, check out YouTube, Twitter as well. I'm active on both of those platforms quite a bit uh, more than Twitch, but love being here to test out some new things. Arceus V. I feel like starting a Crobat is one of the best things you could see playing against a, a deck like this. Uh, do we trekking shoes first? I think we probably do. Yeah, we'll draw this. This is a useless card. Let's Ultra Ball away. Canceling Cologne, scoop up net. Grab Gengar. Quick Ball away, Gengar. Get Zoroark. We will throw Gape Draw Bog down and put Hisuian Zoroark on the bench. 
We'll use Ra or, uh, Crobat V on the bench. We will... Uh, let's see here. I think we probably quick ball away net. Quick ball away net for another Zoro arc. I don't know what Arceus deck is still playing water energy. I'm not totally sure what that is. Uh, we can rope here, but like we're roping into not a ton. Let's go ahead and Marnie. See what we get to here. Damage pump, ultra ball. Uh, let's see. Can ultra ball four cards. We don't really need to right now, though. We need to ultra ball the following turn. So I think we probably just pause here and get going. No reason to bring the Gengar out yet. They bring out the Arc V Star, they're gonna be able to hit that Starbirth ability. Obviously. Oh, research. What a hand. Playing some kind of Arceus variant. Could be Arctina, I guess. Arctina doesn't really play water energy, though, I don't think. I don't think they play water energy very much. Ooh, Arceus Gudra. So Gudra is, oh, what a card. Gudra is a deck I am fairly worried about in the meta overall, but especially like, I don't know, with, with really any deck, but this one in particular. We should be able to get quite a bit rolling here, but it's going to take a lot to make it happen. We're going to have to boss up the Gudra V no matter what. I think that's definitely a play next. Gonna bring one of our Zoroarks into the active here. Okay, let's evolve. I think we can quick ball away the Ultra Ball and find a Crobat or Ultra Ball away Quick Ball Net. It's probably better. Ultra Ball away Quick Ball Net. Get another bat. No more bats. I'm crazy. Uh, let's go ahead and get another Zoroark. That's fine. We'll just keep these streaming. Bench this. No damage. That's right. Bring in the Gengar onto the bench. Netherworld Gates. We will damage pump this way. Boss in the Gudra. And we will use Phantom Star to draw our own set of seven cards. All right, that is quite a bit of what we needed. Uh, actually, that's everything we needed, right? We can throw the Mew down. We can attach... We're going to hold the Choice Belt because we're going to need that later. But this is 250 minus 20 is 240. Seems absolutely fine. So we will... Taking Curse for some damage. Yeah, and I did math correctly there, so we're good to go. And we can damage pump to get our guy hitting 280 next turn. Getting the Gengar, canceling clone. Neither of those cards are very important. We also have Belt, which can help make up the difference and fix our math a little bit. We have another boss, too, so we can always just hit the Gudra they bring in. Which I think is actually just the correct play here. Right, they're going to hit us with Trinity Nova. Oh, bossing up probably the Bat, yeah. That'll, that'll be a card. Luckily, though, for us, we can do the exact same play. And now, actually, they've put themselves in kind of an awkward spot. 180. We just have to make sure we don't put anything in range of this uh, Arceus V-Star. That's the biggest thing. Go through the Gape Draw Bog down. Bench Mew. We will damage pump from this here. We'll just move 10 damage over. And we will boss the Gudra again. And we will... Striking Shoes real quick. Uh, no, we don't need another damage pump. Striking Shoes again. We don't need another Mew. We would love a DTE. We do not get it, though. So we will Ticking Curse here. For another knockout, see what we pull out of our prizes. 
I have not done good prize mapping so far. Scoop up net's big because we can throw Mew up in the active. Luminion also a factor here to be able to grab some kind of supporter to get us more of a draw so we can like Marnie or anything like that. They Marnie, so no bossing. But that does mean they shouldn't be able to knock anything out here. They could go like power or uh, we can just feed them a one prizer though if they go with escape rope. That's fine. If they do rope us with this hand, we probably throw the Zoroark V up and we do win. I think we kind of had, if they didn't play choice belt, which I don't think that they do, I think we had them in checkmate there. They would have to like belt rope. All right, well, thank you guys so much for sticking around throughout that video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, the deck definitely is more competitively interesting than I gave it credit for, and I'm really excited to see how it can round out the Lost Origin meta across just the few events it has left. Definitely excited to take Zoroark V-Star to locals before Silver Tempest comes out. What did you guys think of the deck, though? Uh, there are certainly some misplays if you go on Twitch, uh, which you should go follow me on Twitch. Go uh, subscribe on YouTube if you're not subscribed already. Let me know in the comments below, did you enjoy this deck? Do you think it's going to actually be good? Does it have the legs to move? I know there's a lot of people that really enjoy this list, so love to know what you guys think. And we'll be talking to you very soon. A Silver Tempest set review should be coming out as the next video. So stick around and stay tuned for that. And have a great rest of the day.